Good afternoon, everyone. I'm a split-side PhD student registered at the University of Mauritius and currently on a one-year visit at the University of Southampton. My presentation will focus on marine atmospheric corrosion of carbon steel in the tropical macroclimates of Mauritius. I will start by introducing the pressing problems of atmospheric corrosion in the macroclimates of Mauritius the aim to investigate the behavior of carbon steel in these microclimates will be explained. I will show the experimental setup and results from mass loss analysis and characterization of corrosion products will be discussed followed by a conclusion. Atmospheric corrosion is known to be severe in coastal zones worldwide. However, the mechanism of corrosion in the Mauritian microclimates which are associated with high relative humidity, natural airborne sea aerosols, and heavy industry contaminants is unknown. Models developed for other regions in the world are not suitable prognostic tools to be used in such microclimates. As you can see from the map here, Mauritius is situated on the east of Madagascar and is under the influence of the southeast trade winds carrying sea particles inland. Mauritius is a small nation with an emerging economy and has narrow resources. The devastating effects of atmospheric corrosion can be seen in the south coast with the bridges and lattice towers heavily corroded. Our particular concern in this study is the capital of Mauritius, Portly City, which is situated on the northwest coast of the island and is also the only harbor of the country. Heavy fuel, oil and water tanks, which are covered with coal tar epoxy coating, has to be repainted every five years. Archive based paints used on nearby structures have to be applied twice a year. All these lead to huge maintenance costs. Furthermore, major developments are expected in the port area in the near future with the construction of a new dry dock, a new quay, a new marina, and extension of the container terminal. Portis has an industrial zone comprising of three power stations. They are heavy oil fired power stations, releasing large amount of sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere. Now all these projects expected in Portis will require extensive use of carbon steel, which is vulnerable to corrosion in this area. Portris is also situated on the leeward side of the Mocha mountain range, hindering the prevailing rain patterns, causing the land to remain dry with less moisture in the air. One objective of this study is to explain the marine corrosion rate of carbon steel based on the climatic parameters, the pollutants, and the geographical variables in the region. The other objectives are to determine and understand the formation mechanisms of various rust phases in such an atmosphere exhibiting a complex spread of chloride and sulfur dioxide. To achieve these objectives, Exposures of S235 grade carbon steel have been carried out for a total of 14 months at six sites in Portris. They are AM, FG, LM, MA, RG, and FV. Now all these sites have been selected based on their proximity with the seashore and the power stations. In addition, two control atmospheres have also been investigated, so test rocks have been placed there. The first control atmosphere is MC, which is situated close at the center of the island. It is far from pollution sources and is expected to have a clean atmosphere. The second control atmosphere is GG, which is a southern beach site, which is popular for large waves crashing on the rocky shore, giving rise to large amount of marine salts in the atmosphere. Carbon steel plates of size 150 
times 100 millimeters have been exposed at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. All the rocks are facing the ocean, except the rock placed in the mid-island atmosphere, which faces the north. The wet candle is set up to measure chloride depletion rate, and sulfation plates to measure sulfur dioxide level have been incorporated with the test rock. One year within the total exposure period, the climatic parameters such as monthly relative humidity, temperature, and amount of rainfall have been monitored. This graph of relative humidity against time shows that port waste, represented as PL here, has a lower relative humidity compared to the controlled atmospheres throughout the year. A similar trend is observed for amount of rain which is lower for port risk compared to the other atmospheres, that is the control atmospheres. Finally, the highest temperature observed at port risk during the year confirms that port risk is a relatively dry region. Now, corroded metal plates have been removed at specific time intervals for a mass loss analysis to determine the corrosion rate. This corrosion rate has been used to calculate the total attack, capital D, which represents the degree of corrosion, which equals to the corrosion rate times time of exposure to the power of B. B is a time exponent whose value depends on the environment and the metal. A graph of total attack against time show high R square values for all the sides, which implies that the power law equation fits the data very well. As seen from the graph, there is an early stage where you have acceleration of corrosion, and then a longer stage where you have decreasing corrosion rate, most probably due to formation of stable rust phases. The power law equation for all the sides are listed here and there are two sides having a B value greater than 0 0.5, which implies that the rust layer on these two sides have low protection against corrosion. A parameter often used instead of relative humidity is the time of wetness, also represented as TOW. This is defined as duration during which relative humidity is above 80%. The time of wetness values, the chloride deposition rate values, and sulfide dioxide levels have been assigned categories according to BSE and ISO 9223. It is observed here that for chloride deposition rate, all sites of the S1 category, except GG, which is a southern marine site, having a corrosion, sorry, a chloride deposition rate higher than the upper limit of the highest category, which confirms that this is a chloride rich atmosphere. All the sites in Portis are the S1 category, however, there's a marked difference between the chloride deposition rates measured from these sites with the highest value observed at RG, and this is very close to the upper limit of that category. It is also interesting to note that the chloride deposition rate of MC, which is the mid-island atmosphere, is higher than all the sites in Portris except RG. And MC and GG have a high QW, time of wetness, compared to port risk. Regarding the sulfur dioxide level, all sites are of the lowest category P note, with the site at FG having the highest value, and this is a site which is closest to a power station. 
a visual assessment of the corroded surfaces of the metal plates was carried out after two months and 11 months of exposure. After two months of exposure, difference in appearance of the specimens exposed at different sites at and the mid atmosphere can be observed. The orange and brown rust colors are consistent with formation of the lepidocrosite and goethite rust phases. After 11 months of exposure, as the rust layer thickens, there are rougher textures on the surfaces and the rust color grows darker. The mass loss values were used to calculate the corrosion rate for the first year of exposure and corrosivity, corrosivity categories according to BSEN ISO 9223 was assigned to each site. It can be seen here that all the sites in Port Ries are of the low corrosivity category C2. However, there is a broad range of corrosion rates associated with these sites within the C2 category, with the highest at FG, which is of 189.2 gram per meter square per year, and this is close to the upper limit of that category. Then you have the mid island atmosphere MC having a higher corrosivity category, and GG is of the highest corrosivity category. This graph shows the total attack against time for the extreme marine site. This one shows a linear behavior of total attack against time. This has occurred because of exfoliation of the corroded plates at this site. You have the outer layer which comes off and the inner layer exposed. That's why corrosion persists at a linear rate at this site. You can see the brown and orange colors here on the inner layer on the interior surfaces, which indicates the presence of the acaganite and magnetite rust phases. This graph shows wind speed against time for one year during the exposure period. The graph also shows the chloride deposition rates during this time period. The chloride measurement carried out during winter coincide with the high wind conditions and the values are high. The chloride deposition rates carry, measurement carried out in summer coincides with the low wind conditions and the values are low. This implies that chloride deposition rates increases with wind speed. This figure also have a map of Mauritius showing the wind direction in Portris which is generally west-northwest. That is, the, land, the wind blows from land to sea. Now, this explains the low chloride deposition rates observed in Portris as the specimens face the sea, but on the downwind side. Loose rust deposits were scraped from the corroded surfaces or XRD analysis, they were obtained in powdered form. And uh, the diffraction patterns observed are compared to database of reference patterns to identify the rust phases present on those surfaces. After 11 months of exposure at these four sites, we could say the strongest peaks relate to the goethite and lipidocrosite rust phases. And there are low percentages of magnetite, acaganite, and also gyrocyte rust phase is observed in small amount at FG, which is the site closest to the power station. The four other sites show a similar trend with the predominant phases being lipidocrosite and goethite. Using the scanning electron microscope, the surface morphology of the corroded specimens were examined. At uh, AM, 
on other sites in potteries. There were different forms of lepidocosite which were observed, ascending grains, bird's nest, and bow shaped. And the bow shaped was with the thorny appearance, which implies the presence of goethite as well. Goethite also occurs as whiskers, and magnetite was seen as spinel and in the typical donut form. At RG, having the highest chloride depletion rate in portraits, the similar phases were observed, similar forms were observed, except a new form of lepidocosite as a worm's nest. At EMI, apart from the predominant rust phases, rod type formations could be seen on amorphous masses, which represents acaganite. At LM, apart from the lepidocosite rust phases, goethite occurred as circular rings with an internal structure of thin thorny lamina. That is after eight months of exposure. At FG, elongated tubes of acaganite and that structure of gyrocyte were observed. This is the site closest to the power station. At FV, the cloud-like formation on spinel magnetite, and this cloud-like formation represents acaganite. At the mineral atmosphere, MC, two new forms of lepidocosite were observed. They are clump of growth structure and bow-shaped lamina, lamina and weed-like structure. So these are the two new forms, clump of growth and weed-like structures. At the extreme marine site, after two months of exposure, we could see transformation of lepidocosite, which occurs as globular formations, into goethite, which occurs as acicular, that is needle-like formations. Energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy was used, and at MA, after 11 months of exposure, MA is a site in portraits, you could observe noticeable percentage of sulfur and chloride. Now, it should be noted that ME has the lowest corrosion rate of all sites. Now, ME is, has an urban morphology. It is surrounded by large infrastructures, buildings, although there is no obstruction for sea aerosols entrainment. However, there is shielding from the effect of rain at this site. This does not contribute in washing off of pollutants from the surface. That's why you could observe sulfur and chloride on the surfaces and which doesn't penetrate the rust layer because of lack of precipitation and sorption at this site. At FG, the lat structure was examined and potassium and sulfur was observed, which confirms that this is a gyrocyte morphology. This figure, the schematic, time profile schematic of the corrosion products evolution under the region effects. The uncontaminated surface has a passive, thin passive oxide hydroxide layer. And after a few weeks, you could see the brown lepidocosite layer, which forms as a thin electrolyte film comprising of chloride and sulfur dioxide sets on the surface. The next stage of rust development shows the transformation of lepidocosite into the stable goethite rust phase, and also there are formations of other rust compounds like iron oxychloride, iron sulfate, and gyrocyte. The rust layer also grows as a porous membrane, as seen here. To conclude, following characterization of corrosion products, it was seen that the conditions at the different sites in portraits were not adequate for formation of a significant amount of acaganite and magnetite rust phases, which require high chloride content and acidic conditions of the atmosphere. However, there were low percentages of these compounds, which does not form 
and the rust metal interface. All the corrosive categories are thought risk was the same. However, marked differences were obtained in corrosion rates. This shows that location specific conditions such as sulfide dioxide level and chloride depletion rate were having an effect on corrosion rate. The chloride depletion rate at port list is highly seasonal, and as such, they are linked to wind speed. That is, the weather conditions influence corrosion rate in this region. Except for GG, which is an extreme marine site, airborne sanity is more or less uniform for the coast to far inland. And the only factor significantly different from port list and MC is relative humidity. Relative humidity is higher at MC, the midline atmosphere, and that site has a higher porosity category than Port Luis, which is a marine region. Finally, coastal regions are known because high corrosion rates. However, this is not observed in Port Luis. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for this interesting talk. Do we have any questions from the audience? Sure. Hello, yes, thank you for the talk. Um, how does the corrosion rate and the response corrosion products uh, on Mauritius vary? Are they dissimilar to other coastal dominated locations in the world, or are they significantly different from other coastal locations? Because you said at the beginning mm -hmm. that the, the microclimate in your island was, 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 could not be replicated. It was unique, really, to, to your island. So what are the, the corrosion rate results? Are they similar, or are they completely different? So the results obtained were compared with the uh, other tropical countries where similar studies have been carried out, such as in Mexico, in Colombia, and in those places, what was observed that for similar atmosphere, S1, P0 category atmosphere, the corrosion rate is not influenced by the time of wetness. So you can have similar S1, P0 atmospheres, but you cannot say that the corrosion rate will be higher because of a higher relative humidity. So that's why you can't apply the models developed there in the microclimates in Mauritius. You remind the audience how time of wetness is defined. Time of wetness yes. is defined as duration during which relative humidity is above 80%. I think temper. So, so, so the reason that's defined that way is because salt deliquesces at a humidity of 75%. So at 80%, the surface will be wet if it's contaminated with salt. That, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah, normally, the deliquescence depends on the type of soil. It is different, whether it's NACL, MGCL, it's different for different type of soil. And in port risk, the relative humidity was less than that. So deliquescence wasn't occurring in port risk. Anyone else? Just painted. No, sorry, that was what I was suggesting. Um, sorry, Yash. Fascinating talk. Um, I, I mean, what do you do now you've got this data? How, what's it going to change in, in Mauritius? Now, this data is going to be very helpful in the design of the structures, in the selection of material for the construction work, selection of coatings. Because I Mauritius has narrow resources. Okay, so they have to find ways. They cannot use, like, they cannot design disproportionately expensive structure using the advanced coatings. This so now there will be proper design of structures, given the conditions in Mauritius. Great, no good. I mean, certainly when you talk about painting twice a year, yeah. I, I think you know, that probably is not best use of your money. You, know, you would be better off to spend it on a paint that allows you to have at least you know, two years' lifetime, and I'd expect more like five you know, things that are available. But no, it's a really fascinating thing to do. And I think I was amazed that the centre of the island has more salt than, than somewhere that's right yeah, by the sea. Yeah, coastal regions. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not surprising we describe GGG uh, <laughs> by the beach as being in a very different... Yeah. The only one I spotted, the FV seemed to have a higher sulphur content, the one you said was highest. Was that a typo on your slide, or is FV not a very good site to take? Go back on one of your early yeah. slides. 
Um, I might have mis 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 misread it, but uh, next one, no. F FV seems to be up at 2.37, whereas FG was at 1.9. Yes. So, actually, if you look at the map here, you would see uh, FV and FG. Now, if you look at the critical locations, so this site, Saint Louis Power, sorry, for Victoria Power Station, is it's close right. to FV, yeah. and this one is close to FG. So both are actually very high. Close to yeah. both yeah. are actually close to the power stations. So actually, the highest one is at uh, FV. So that's right. It's not this one. It is FV. Yeah. Okay. No, did you correlate the the because uh, SO2 depends how you measure it, but SO2 can be uh, mixed up with sulfate coming in from sea salt. It's residual sulfate and sea salt. So I wonder whether you could correlate the chloride level with the sulfate level, and the excess is due to SO2. No, there was no correlation, but actually the main sources of sulfur dioxide were due to anthropogenic contaminants, that is, contaminants from power stations, but uh, still the values of sulfur dioxide level is quite low. Yeah, it's low. Yeah. 